for you. And I'll never forget that one night we were at the comedy store and it was uh, it was it was Marilyn's, you know, uh, like funeral. And, and then Jeff Valdez went up there and I'm like, oh, my God. And I witnessed. Uh, yeah, I, I saw I saw the the side of Joey that I never wanted to be in front of <laughs> i saw i saw those flames directing at, at someone and it wasn't me and i was i was never more happy that <laughs> that, that i was never on your bad side because you know, uh gary i'm trying to write a joke right now comparing a, a wake to hollywood like i saw my mother get buried and i went to this wake and cuban wakes are five days four days fucking long you know, the, the arm has to pop up before they bury it. They, they swear to God, <laughs> you, something's got to move before they bury him. So I saw all these people come into this wake, and everybody told me if I ever need anything to call them. And a month later when I called them, the phone was disconnected. Mm. You know, so I've always had a big problem with wakes. Like, I just don't fucking like them. So I walk in there that day. See, there's a backstory to the Jeff Valdez thing. You know that he tortured me in Maryland for years. And that thing that he did to me with the Latino Laugh Festival, I never, ever forgot that. Because he made me showcase like a donkey five times, clean. And then he said, you didn't make it to the festival. But then he did a midnight blue show. Mm -hmm. And he didn't ask me to do the dirty show. And I saw him at the, he came to the store on purpose that Monday night, like to rub it in my face. And I was like, that's a declaration of war. <laughs> but I'll save that for later down the road. That's how crazy I am. So this is 98. And I saved it as a declaration of war <laughs> that showed back up yeah. in 2007. Like, I always knew I was going to stab him one way or another. I'm, I'm looking at you in the face, and I'm telling you that that whole thing, how to describe to comedians what it felt like, it was a time in my life where I couldn't find an agent. I was booking shit. I booked the CBS pilot. I booked basketball, and I had booked something else. Everybody was had agents. Everybody was going to Montreal. Everybody was getting something. And here I am stuck at the store following Paul Mooney every night. And I didn't really see it for what it was. Do you know what I'm saying, dog? Mm -hmm. So here I am living my life. I never bothered the Latin community. In, 2000, in, in 1996, they called me in Seattle and flew me down and put me in a hotel in Wilshire and took me to the Laugh Factory and made me go up number six behind Greg Giraldo and fucking wow. Pablo. This is when Pablo was a fucking pure yes. hell. This is when Pablo was doing Seinfeld in Spanish. And once I saw that, my insides broke. I'm like, I don't deserve to be down here. So I went up. They put me up like number fucking two. I'm a Cuban guy in an all-Mexican room. I get fucking buried. I get off stage. There was one person who came up to me and gave me a hug, Marilyn Martinez. Came up to me and she goes, that's the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. <laughs> These steps just don't fucking get it. They don't understand. Fuck them. They have a broom up their fucking pussies. You know, like, <laughs> she would just go off into like this thing. That's how I met Marilyn Martinez, was after bombing my first time ever in L.A. <laughs> and getting off the stage and her going off and taking me outside and telling me to move here that I should be on the next plane down here, that they're looking for guys like me. And I remember taking her number. And I went back to Seattle, kept in touch with Marilyn, mm -hmm. and then I got the deal from CBS. And when I came back, I called Marilyn. And she told me, come to the store. I'll introduce you to Mitzi, the whole fucking thing. I mean, it was just mind-boggling how nice of a lady she was. She had the black husband, David. 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 Always had those mints in his pocket? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could always depend on David to have it hand me a mint. She just, it was just a weird... Yeah. I don't know what she was to you and me. She was like, she went off on you. She went off on me. You know, 
It was like oh, she was like an she angel. She would go off on me for bad relationship choices because I would always <laughs> tell her what was going on. You're stupid. You know, <laughs> she would tell me some nasty things I should be doing instead of trying to be romantic. <laughs> <laughs> David, give him a mint. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! I, I, it's funny. I don't. I have a picture of her on my uh, on my clipboard. It's like I have a clipboard on the wall, and I mm-hmm. just look at it. Whenever I see it, I just think of her. Say, she would call the house dog, and if I didn't pick up, remember the old answer answering machine? machine? Pick up, pick up, pick up. She, Hello, I know you're there. She would say, cocksucker. And my girlfriend would go, what kind of people do you hang out with? Like, That's when I first started dating Terry. And Marilyn would call the house. We'd leave the store at 2. You went to the Santa Monica. You got a chicken burrito. You just talked there till about quarter to 3. And then you went home. And a half hour later, your phone's ringing. It's Marilyn. And all of a sudden, she go, I got to go. There's a guy calling me for phone sex. And then she would go get a phone sex guy. <laughs> And, and I'd be sitting there snorting blow, and all of a sudden my phone would ring. What's up? Fuck him. He wanted me to stick a broomstick up my pussy. <laughs> like she would say all this shit to you. And you and I'd be coked up, Gabriel. I'd be five in the morning coked up. And you've talked about Marilyn before that you know the people know that she's she used to be a, a phone sex yes. operator back in the day. Those nine seven six days in the now, late you gotta remember 90s. Marilyn was five for four. Three hundred. <laughs> Three seventy-eight. <laughs> well, she had one of those and voices. That's not the shoes. Her head looked like you got hit with a safe. Like somebody <laughs> dropped a safe from the eleventh floor. God rest her soul. I'm not saying nothing bad about her. I miss her dearly. I couldn't even imagine her around today. Like, oh I'm wow, pissed. I couldn't even imagine her around tipping the scales at four hundred eating on a podcast, talking dirty shit about people. Because by this time, she would have been fucking gone. She would have still been talking shit about poetry. (laughs) God rest his soul. Yeah, she was not for the sensitive. Yeah, her... (laughs) But, you know, it was weird that she was a phone sex operator. And she told me that she would remember her character was Miko. Miko. I'm a Japanese. Yeah, she's Japanese. She was Mexican. <laughs> and she would play Miko and something else. And then she would She'd call. grab her cheek and she sounds so wet. And she'd do the little. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is how she paid the bills? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. And I remember going on the road with them and going to the hotel room where they had a cooler filled with licorice. And candies. They were like walking diabetes. It was it was tremendous. It was tremendous. It was like having a mom, but not really. She was a comedy fucking chick, man. She was, was awesome. She's been dead for twelve years now. Oh wow. Because that's how long I've been clean. She died the week I decided to get clean. So that's what I'm trying to say to you. Jeff Valdez caught a beating. Eight years later, I waited in the bushes. <laughs> like, like, what's his name in the beginning of fucking? Oh my God. <laughs> what's his name in the beginning of Apocalypse Now? Remember when he takes the head of ass and he's naked in his room? Charlie Sheen's father. Martin. Oh, my Martin. God. I'm like Martin Sheen. Remember he says, right now I'm in this room getting weaker while Charlie's in the bush getting stronger. <laughs> I was just Charlie in the bush getting stronger. And I always knew I was going to light Valdez up for that night. He broke me. Like, it didn't matter what else was going on in my life. Like, it didn't matter I was poor. It didn't matter that I didn't have a fucking theatrical agent. It didn't matter that nobody wanted to sign me. That None of that shit mattered. You couldn't give me a spot in a dirty show at the festival. I never forgave him for that. And how he switched it up that week after he humiliated me like four or five times. The following year, he sent us down there and he paid us with a I remember check. it was you and Marilyn. Me, yeah. Marilyn, and then just because he sent me down there didn't mean I forgave him. <laughs> I always kept that in the back of my mind and it was always going to be a smack to the face at least. I knew it was going to be a smack to the face. So I let it 
whatever. I picked up the longest yard. They call me. They try to run a scam by me. <clears throat> First, they called with a number, and I said, go fuck yourself. Then they called back with the number I asked for, like, that easy. Like, all of a sudden, now was fucking Bill Cosby. I'm the hottest act. Like, just they, they just weren't right. Something wasn't right. And then they did that last festival where everybody bowed out of. And they did the theater. Jeff Valdez did the theater on Hollywood Boulevard. I was still living in Hollywood. He kept calling me going, come on, come over and do the theater. It doesn't pay anything. But he's charging $55 at the door. He's not paying anything. And I, and I was over it already. I was over the whole Latin scene. That, sh that ship had fucking sailed. sailed and went. Like the whole, whole, whole thing had gone. It was broken. And all of a sudden, the thing I fucking hate the most happened. A friend of mine dies. So at the time, I know he was giving her work. Remember, they were doing that TV sh sh show about her working with kids. Yeah, this, uh, was it a show on, like, CTV? With the... Yes. He was paying her, like, 500 bucks. I'm not mad at him for that. I was mad at him for what he put us through. Because not only was I heartbroken, but Marilyn cried. Marilyn cried to me, saying that the reason why she didn't get it was because she wasn't pretty and shit. And I just never forgot that night. And I just knew he was going to get it. And all of a sudden, God forbid, eight years later, Marilyn Martinez is dead. I get off the plane from New York. I haven't done coke all weekend. So I was four days into wrestling with the no coke thing. I get back. Uh, there's going to be a wake. My cat dies. I make a fucking promise that I'm not going to snore coke if the other cat lives. And all of a sudden, we have to go to church for Marilyn Martinez. And I parked the car. I was maybe 390 at the time. And I was taking Kung Fu in Silver Lake with some fucking... Joey Karate. With, that was how Joey, Joey karate, karate became. Okay. And I'll never forget parking the car, going in and seeing Jeff Valdez by the church. And my blood pressure went up from 100 to 190. And I said, hello, I was called you. And there was drama going on. Who was going to pay for the funeral? Marilyn's husband couldn't afford the funeral. Some people said they were going to pay for the funeral. But if certain people showed up, they weren't going to pay for the funeral. So David was all stressed out. I, I was living in a fucking apartment. I could barely make $700 a month rent. I couldn't help out. I felt horrible. So I knew all this bad energy was going on. So you know me. You know I'm hot-headed. And at that time, I had the drugs going on. So I could, I could hit you with a dish. I threw a bottle at some guy at the comedy store. I used you know, I was doing shit that junkies do. You know what I'm saying? I was doing junkie shit. So I bowed out of that thing at the comedy store. That church thing was at 10 o'clock a.m. I saw Jeff there at like 11, and my blood pressure started going up. I went home, and I said, I'm going to stay home and mind my business. I even took a sleeping pill. I took a sleeping pill so I wouldn't do coke. It would have been like the seventh day that I would have been clean from coke. And I was already burning the fuck up, and now my best friend dies. Somebody who calls me every night and calls me cocksucker and all this shit. And I go, fuck this. My friend, a friend of mine who's not my friend no more because she started drinking again and lost her fucking mind, called me up and she goes, listen, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. She was your friend. If you don't go, it's going to look bad. And I go, you know what? You're absolutely right. And I fucking went there, but I stopped. I got $60 out of the ATM in Sunset. And I went to the dealer's house and I bought a gram of Coke and I put it in my drug pocket. And I go, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to fucking do whatever they were having. Like a, uh, Now you were there. At, at the store, yeah. At the store when we had a talk. You were there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I walk in. Because then I, Ludovica got naked too. Right, that? Ludovica yeah. showed up. No, by that time they had sent me home. <laughs> I was banned from the building and shit like that. And by the way, I didn't get banned for that. 
Mincy Shaw called me. I told her the truth, and she goes, "Fuck him." I didn't like him anyway. He's a greasy motherfucker or something. So I was like, whew, I risked that bullet. I when I go in there and make the turn. Now, I'm clean off Coke for seven days. I'm pissed off about that. I'm pissed off because they offered me a movie. And the people said to me, excuse me, before you accept the movie, we want you to think about it. Because you know we, we know you have a drug habit. I was oh, pissed wow. about that. I was pissed about Marilyn. I was pissed about everything in my fucking life wasn't going the right way. And I walk into the comedy store main room and there's a buffet for Marilyn's death. There was a line of food in the back that Corey Cuomo had put together, Freddie Soto's wife. wife. God rest his soul. And who was eating the free food but Jeff Valdez? That was the ultimate insult where I come from. I knew I had a stab in the fucking neck. <laughs> I went in, I didn't even have time to, to snort the coke, I swear to God. I went in and I got a, like a dew is on the rocks. And I drank it and I walked and my blood pressure, my heart was pounding. I didn't know if I was gonna hit them. And all of a sudden they stopped me and they go, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna start this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you're three or seventy five. <laughs> we still got it, Doug. Still- That's all that matters. You know what? Fuck the story. We're we'll into with that because this is pure shit that's coming out of my head. <laughs> this, this is, look at him. Look at him. He's turning purple. It's the that. third time he's sported on oh me. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, and that one sounded wet. There's no oh. And you don't wear underwear. Yeah. There's no way you're... you're no, I got underwear on. Trust <laughs> oh, me. Thank God. I'm 57. I went down that road already. 